When creating assessments for students, we need to understand that we what we need to focus on is how you apply that learning to a new situation. That is how we know whether or not a student actually knows the information. So filling out a test where there's just one or one right answer is not going to help us apply that learning to a new situation. And that's what the internet allows us to do. Instead of thinking, how do I keep kids from using the internet? We need to structure questions that allow kids to use the internet. Because in the real world, you get to use the internet. So here's an idea that I've used, and I use this in some of my trainings, where I have scenarios based on a standard that I want kids to do. And I use this in trainings with teachers. And all you all you have to do, you can set this up how you would like, but I have this set up that I ask teachers to answer one of these scenarios, again, choice, answer, pick a scenario, answer a scenario, and you have to email me your answer. So here I pretend that you can be, if you'd like, an assistant to a CEO. I'm going to be in a meeting in 20 minutes with a new client called mint.com. Should I invest in this company? This would be a great math problem. You want kids to look at uh, at, uh, graphs and you want kids to diagnose math. You can change this so that it fits your math um, standard that you're working on. I love this one too. This is a real estate one. If maybe I'm working on area and perimeter, maybe I I want kids to think. And the first thing we have to understand is one of the things we have to know how to read today is know how to read a picture. So I took this picture. I happened to be working with a group of teachers in Moses Lake. So I took a picture off of Google Maps, just took a screenshot of a picture off of Google Maps and said, hey, here's a vacant piece of land. And then I structure some learning around that. Hey, I want to build a new apartment complex on this piece of land. Can I? What are the zoning laws? What's How big of an apartment complex could I build? What do I need to know? What are the rents in the area? And I'm going to have kids create a spreadsheet telling me what are the rents? What income can I have? And I'm working through math. I'm working through algebraic expressions because that's what spreadsheets do. Another great example. This is a stock trader one. Another example for math. There's a science or agriculture one. Again, I took a picture off the internet and I actually, where I get all of these is I'm actually thinking in real life. My uncle happened to work for an agricultural company and they actually had a farmer who walked in and said, I need help with this. And your job is to figure out A, what it is and B, how do you solve it? So this kind of problem puts kids in a scientific mindset. They have to discover the problem first before they find a solution, they then have to go and research and figure out what is the most viable option. And the thing I love about an activity like this is I usually get five or six viable options as answers. And then I ask kids, okay, well, I'm trying to choose which one of your viable answers. So now you have to make a presentation telling me why you believe I should choose yours over everybody else's. And when we get students to think through the process, we can assess that. How are we structuring assessment differently that allows kids to take advantage of the world around them? How do we use the world as our curriculum? And how are you using the world to help create assessments for your students?